be able to go there anymore. But the funny thing with Yoskat is nobody goes to Yoskat anyway. But that's another issue. I mean, there, there are other implications of that. But maybe now more people would go to Yoskat if they would know that this will no, more, no longer exist. Because it's always, for the human race, it tends to be the thing that's getting lost gets more interesting on, on the things with the bikini atoll as well. So it was a nice match to work with. It's all those, those are to two totally different processes. The right one is more like with a color film and it's like directly on the, uh, the film uh, material and the other one is actually on black and white paper and so the material actually directly interacts with the paper so they are different ways of working with it. But they both have maybe the same intent in a way, like they are working with archival material and they are erasing it. And thus somehow recharging them in an analog way with a certain content, I would say. They are making the invisible visible in a way, or somehow tangible. when there is something that somebody accum accumulates something and then there is an area that has a very high level. But as soon, I mean, you know, radioactivity is, is natural. It's nothing that is man-made. It's just there. I mean, it's more a question of do you accumulate or do you not accumulate? That, that are the question. If you accumulate, what do you do with that? But I think if, if there is an accumulation, there is always the potential of something going wrong. I mean, that's quite easy. If you always play with a knife, the possibility that you cut yourself rises to a certain degree. That's just stochastic or statistic. Yeah. To keep on going with the whole idea and the now, which is like that work, and I recommend you highly, if you have not done that yet, to go to the blockout space and meet the beautiful team and have a look at the exhibition uh, once there was a world view of punk uh, curated by um, Point Project, um, a curatorial collective from uh, Berlin. And um, I wanted to say what I did there was like an adaptation of a work that I did in the early 2015s when I started. Uh, it was like between 2013, 14, and 15 when I started to concentrate a lot on the Bikini Islands or the Pacific Islands that have to deal with the realm of radioactivity and that um, contamination issues. And one of the works that resulted out of this was this work, uh, Bikini Atoll Containment 1, which I then later, after I, because often like this that I start a series of works that are transforming called source because at that point of time I was very keen on yeah get the, the coconuts from there and then just use them as something that it looks like burning elements and it's very sculptural and it's like a leaf plate and they are lying around there and actually what you are having here on the coconuts is also like leaf lead or leaf that is actually normally used to shelter from radiation that is actually put inside the coconut or around the coconut to make kind of cage to somehow encompass it. And also that that cage is actually a, a projection of a map because at that time I still was interested in the traveling aspect and the coconuts traveling through the ocean. And uh, just say a short sentence about this, the Polynesian wayfarers have been very, very clever in navigating the oceans without compasses. But what their attempt was, was a very personal one. So they actually could, like the aborigines, more or less read the waves in the oceans and look at the, look at the sky and every old man going day to day to sea has been actually making a map out of sticks and little shells in order to um, create his knowledge. So 
like a, a map as a sculpture more or less, and he has been giving that with the knowledge to the next next generation. So there were a lot of individual maps, not like we have like our planet and we have all those lines on the planet and the coordinates, and we can coordinate.